<laughs> so before I get started, I have a question for all of you. How many here, by show of hands, studied biology in high school? Quite a few of you. How many of you are biologists today? <laughs> Not as many. I'm going to revisit that thought a little bit later. For now, I want to explore a possible solution to a problem that's impacting all of us. You see, I believe that computer science education should be taught to all students from kindergarten through 12th grade. And I believe that we need to extend these opportunities to our most disadvantaged youth first. Those who live in communities where the majority of residents identify as people of color living at or below the poverty line. I believe that computer science education can be a great equalizer. Now, when I first started thinking about this talk, the Charlotte that we lived in looked much different. In fact, just a few short months ago, US News and World Report ranked our city the 15th best place to live in the country, a melting pot that was easy to break into. I've told friends that the recent shooting of Keith Lamont Scott and the events that took, took place after that shooting were not surprising to me. And not surprising to me or anybody who has been working so hard to address issues of inequity in our great city. You see, we knew we had problems. And these problems were ones that I would discuss behind closed doors with those who understood my frustration as passion. They were problems that we'd talk about in mixed company, but very carefully. They're problems that we must now all address. You see, we as a city had become masterful at addressing issues without really addressing them, sweeping them under the rug. Charlotte, that rug has been pulled up. And while I'm not exactly certain the way forward, I do know that a solution is going to require us to prioritize our youth. In that 2014 study on economic mobility, I know many of you are aware of what I'm talking about, the researchers concluded that in order to address issues of social mobility, we were going to need to tackle them at a local level by improving childhood environments. How do we do that? It's my belief that we have a real opportunity with technology and computer science. You see, from a very young age, I was learning by doing with technology. From a very young age, I learned computer science. A fundamental of computer science, I began coding in about the fourth grade. Mom was looking for a way to improve her grocery shopping experience, and the solution appeared right next door. I can still remember that neon sign, future kids. For mom, it was a daycare more or less. She could drop us off for 30 minutes or an hour and stock up on that week's BOGO items. <laughs> but for me, it was a whole new world. From a very young age, I recognized the power of technology. From a very young age, I knew that it was a tool that could and would transform my life. From that first trip to Gateway Country, I know some of you remember that box with the cow print, <laughs> to spending a full day researching and finally picking out the best laptop to take away to college. I knew that technology was the way forward. And while I didn't choose to continue a formal computer science education after future kids, I always knew that that was a career path that was accessible to me. I also knew that it was a lucrative one. That one with anyone, anyone who had the will could develop the skill. Nearly 20 years after my home was transformed by that desktop dinosaur, I entered a classroom as a fourth grade teacher to learn that not a single student, not one, 
of the students in my class had a laptop or a computer at home. Further, the only real technology available to me as the teacher at that time in 2009 was an overhead projector with a light bulb. <laughs> We've made considerable progress distributing technology through our schools. We've done so more equitably, and you all have read the newspaper stories where thousands of laptops are being deployed to eliminate the educational achievement gap. I'm scared, though. I'm scared because I think that in many places, we're just delivering technology for technology's sake. I think what we're doing in a lot of places is simply reducing the number of copies our teachers are making at the copy machine every day. Those new digital copies are being placed in front of students like Jakari, a fifth grader who has a love for numbers. And those digital worksheets are doing nothing more than only further disenfranchising him from a system that wasn't really developed with him in mind. Before his passing, the iconic musical artist Prince noted that when we see a young African-American male wearing a hoodie, we perceive him to be a thug. Yet when we see a young white male wearing a hoodie, we think, might be Mark Zuckerberg or a dot-com billionaire. How do we begin to rewrite this narrative, one that places way too much emphasis on both race and class? We do so by providing Jakari with the same experiences that I had as a child. We do so by offering him various ways to show understanding and by placing less of an emphasis on his standardized test scores. You see, I first met Jakari about two years ago. I had started teaching coding classes on Saturday mornings. And fairly early on, I knew that Jakari was going to be an outlier in the room. He, he knew what was going on. One of the first things he said to me was, uh, Mr. Jessup, I'm just so fascinated by algorithms. <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> Let me figure out what I'm going to teach you now. So I used one of my teacher tricks, and I made him the assistant. <laughs> he walked around the room, helping his peers move their objects on the screen from one place to another by, coding lines of, by stringing lines of code together. You see, Jakari's interactions with his peers, as well as the products he was creating, could be described as nothing less than impressive. Yet in school, Jakari was failing math. And my thoughts about Jakari contradicted everything both his teacher and his report card had to say about him. So Saturday mornings, they improved Jakari's self-esteem. He still shows up, rain or shine, telling me what I don't know. <laughs> and they've also helped his dad to recognize a potential career path. Last winter, Jakari's dad shared with me one Saturday morning that he too had started taking computer science classes at the local community college. Here's the part where I'm going to throw a lot of statistics at you, so bear with me. In 2020, it's believed that there will be a million unfilled jobs in the field of computer science in this country. Yet today, only about one in five school children are enrolled in computer science coursework. It probably comes as no surprise to most of you that the majority of these kids look something like me. How do we ensure that students like Jakari can succeed in the 21st century? How do we ensure that all kids have access to various opportunities to show mastery and to pursue experiences aligned with their interests. We do so by offering up computer science to all. My drumbeat for this type of education is about providing every single student with the opportunity to make, to break, and to fix. We do so 
by ensuring that we are developing creators, not consumers, as this entrenched issue of economic immobility is not going to be solved by test scores alone. Why is it that we have spent years developing standardized assessments that only gauge the knowledge and understanding of a select few? Most recently, I was reading a research study that noted that our teachers working in our poorest schools were most likely to believe computer science as a vital component of their child's educational experience. Yet our school board leadership tends to disagree, both on that survey as well as in policy and action. Why? Because all of us have been overemphasizing these assessments, these abilities that allow us to note a school as high performing or worthy of an A letter grade. I argue that we need to be able to measure a student's ability to read a nonfiction passage and answer questions, as well as his or her ability to manipulate a technology tool to produce a desired outcome. So if I did my job here today, at the end of this evening, you all will run out the doors and begin talking about why computer science education needs to be taught to all kids. But I want to warn you, the dissenters are going to say, if we teach computer science to everyone, we're going to have too many computer scientists. I'll remind you of that question I asked earlier, and take a minute to look around the room. <laughs> How many biologists are in here? Do we have one? I can't really see up there. Not many. One. We've got one biologist. <laughs> Charlotte, real talk. We can crack the code on economic immobility by providing all students with computer science education. We can crack the code on economic immobility by offering these experiences to those who we know deserve them the most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.